It's a pleasure to be here again. I, I mean, this is a first-class affair, and uh, Joe, we thank you for your leadership at this conference. It just continues to improve and improve um, to be here at St. Vincent. What a beautiful place. And, uh, a college with a tremendous, tremendous mission statement. Bob Dunham, you've got a beautiful uh, opportunity here. You really do. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, make a couple comments just about the individual programs, individual schools. I know I'm supposed to talk about my football team, but fellas, I'm not going to say anything other than if I'll talk about Tamelio, but I'm not going to say anything about our guys. Um, you know, the bottom line is this. Uh, we're going to experience adversity along the way. If we can handle it, we'll be successful. Uh, if we can't, then uh, I'm going to go back to selling pharmaceuticals like I did before. But uh, uh, it, it's, it, it's what it comes down to. We're in a situation in our program with numbers and a kind of school that we are at Geneva where uh, <clears throat> if we're going to have some injuries, we're going we're to fight, we're going to claw and try to be competitive. If we can stay healthy, uh, we got some tremendous student athletes. The one thing that we feel at our place that we continually preach about is character. And when I talk to you um, and talk about Aaron, you'll, you'll get that. But i, I got to say this, the one thing that just continues to impress me about this league, and this is in coach speak, and I know you got to say all the right things and all the nice things at this. You got to thank the commissioner, thank the place that's uh, you know hosting you. If your AD is here, you got to say, you know, I'm glad she's here today. Uh, you got to do all that. Um, but I, this is heartfelt and this is uh, straight and being real. The coaching in this league um, is second to none. And uh, I uh, have been in different conferences. Uh, I respect every one of you. Um, each one of you brings some, some different strength uh, to the table from a coaching standpoint. All of us are in different situations. We do what we can uh, in our situation. Uh, the thing that I like is when you talk with football coaches, it's very simple. You've got to find a way. And um, uh, the one thing I love is being around football coaches because no matter what it is, we're talking about adversity. And, uh, fellas, you guys know that in this life, and you're going to find out, if you haven't already, that some days it's just not going to go right for you. Some years it might not go right for you. Well, how do you handle it? And I, and I can guarantee you that you'll probably remember your college coach talking about how tough you're going to be in situations like that. At Geneva, we do it from a faith standpoint and our commitment to Jesus Christ. We believe that that's the ultimate strength, and uh, that's who we are. And We don't make any excuse about it. That's what we're about. And um, I, I think from a standpoint of coaching, um, to be able to, to line up and, and to go against these coaches uh, is a tremendous challenge, a tremendous challenge week in and week out. And, uh, you know, it's uh, – Every, every one of us have our own rivalries, but I'll tell you, it's, it's like competing in the Big Ten. You better bring it or you're going to get knocked in the teeth. And uh, uh, last year, I could have uh, it been um, a great example for somebody who was getting their teeth knocked in because it was the worst start we've ever had at Geneva. And uh, because of the character of our kids and what our assistant coaches did, we were able to re uh, turn that thing around and ended up having a, um, a real successful year. In fact, after 16 years, I can say that last year was probably the most gratifying thing that we've done. Uh, to be able to uh, you know, finish tied for third or second in this league, however, and somehow we caught the conference champ at the right time. Uh, but we're gonna try to build on that success. And if there was ever a display of character, it was last year. In fact, I found out you know, that uh, there was only one other school in the entire country to finish, started one in five and won the rest of their games, and that was Rutgers. Rutgers went to a bowl game. We couldn't go to a bowl game, as you know, Bob had uh, said, so uh, we did the next best thing, and that was to knock off the conference champ. And I got to tell you, the conference champ was pretty good. And the team that went deep in the playoffs was pretty good. And the team that finished third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eight in the league, they're pretty good. And every time we play somebody, they're pretty good. So when you guys in the media ask me on Monday, how does this team look? I'm sick, I'm worried, I'm absolutely uh, neurotic um, about it because I respect everything that you guys do. And when I watch your teams on tape, um, you're well coached. And it's not an act, it's just the way I'm wired. 
So at the beginning of the year, you're going to ask, what's our team going to be like? I'm going to tell you right now, the only thing I know, we'll be undefeated before September 1st. That's it. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to block, tackle, run, catch, throw. Uh, based on some of the kids we got returning from last year, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, I can tell you one thing, that our team will display great character. I mean, to me, we, we use that as a competitive advantage. We've got tough kids, very tough kids. And the kid I like to talk about is Aaron, Aaron Tomelio. He's an education major. He wants to get into coaching. Over the last 17 years, we've had 80 kids that have coached or are in coaching, 80 players. And the reason that is our philosophy at Geneva is we feel that coaching is a tremendous ministry. I think in today's culture, in today's um, society, that this game could be the last bastion of manhood. And if you want to reach men and you want to build character, this might be the last place to do it. And I know every football coach sitting here believes the same thing because uh, there aren't too many other avenues that you can do it. This is a, a tremendous opportunity to serve Geneva as the head football coach. And I get a chance to coach a kid like Aaron Tomelio, who after the second game last year had a minor tear in his knee. It did not require surgery. Uh, and he gutted it out, and he um, you know, wore a brace and did everything, but he played eight games on a bum leg. And I know, guys, you have players that did that. You know, we can go on and on. Um, the thing that I, admires me most about, about Aaron, there's only one person in the program that worries more than I do, it's him. And he's a tremendous football player, but he's always looking to get better. Um, I'll leave you with a pretty funny story. I think you guys will get a kick out of this. About 29 years ago, almost 30 years ago, Aaron's father, um, right about now, would be coming down from the dining hall uh, because he was a free agent with the Steelers. And uh, never forget uh, one of the stories that, that actually Tun Chilkin told me about Tom Tomelio, his father, uh, Aaron's father, that uh, Tom was a you know, small college kid out of Geneva. He was a biology major, uh, could have went to med school and decided to come here as a free agent. And after all, I mean, if you're 23 years old, you're young and you're in shape, and this guy could, I mean, he was a specimen. Came here, and you can remember uh, Tunch telling me the story that, yeah, the kid from Geneva, all he'd do every day at the lunch table would just say, is this the greatest thing in the world? <laughs> I get to practice three days in pads to play football. They feed us as much as we want, and then you get paid a little bit to do it. Well, Aaron's father ended up becoming my boss when I was a pharmaceutical rep. And uh, one of the reasons why I got out of pharmaceuticals is because uh, one of the products that we did try to sell was Rogaine. Now, I don't know if you guys know what Rogaine is, yeah, but it's, it's, that, it's that drug that's going to make you grow hair. Uh, and obviously, when we launched that, my, I had a snowball's chance uh, to, to meet quotas, so I got rid of, you know, got, I had to get out of Dodge. The other two products that we sold were, were things that I seriously considered using last year. One was a sleeping pill because I was up most of the night, and the other was a drug for anxiety because as coaches, you know, it's, it's, it's just by our nature. It's a sickness. It's what we're, we love it. It's, um, so I think that if I continued to work it up, John, I probably would be taking every medication that I sold out of that trunk. Um, I'm going to say one last thing about Aaron's father. When the job came open at Geneva, and I was contemplating leaving that career after seven years. Uh, he sat down with me and he said, you know, um, I know of only one guy that you need to talk to to find out if this is what you want to do. So I went to one person and I asked this person who had won a number of national championships and sat down with them and said, well, what are you going to do to win at Geneva? Can you win at Geneva? And Joe Fusco told me, do you know you can win anywhere? This is what you got to do. I listened to every word he said, wrote it down, followed it, and um, uh, considered not only Joe Fusco, but the, the man that followed him, Gene Nicholson, one of my mentors. Um, that's the coaching room. Nowhere else, no other sport will exchange information with each other. At conferences you go, you sit down, you exchange information. This is how we can get better people come and visit. We exchange information. As football coaches, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to encourage you guys, just keep doing what you're doing. We're in the greatest profession. I mean, to wake up every morning, for some of us it was at 4 o'clock this morning, um, and that's no lie, uh, because I'm absolutely petrified about what's going to happen this season. To wake up and to do what we love, and to call it work, 
We're blessed. We are so blessed. I mean, you think about what our the generation before us did. They went to work. They worked in the mill, and it was work. And uh, to be able to do that in a day and age where people right now uh, are losing their jobs and people can't even find a job that they dislike to be paid, as coaches, we're blessed beyond measure and to be in what I consider the greatest profession. So players, please, when that coach keeps saying that thing for the hundredth time, listen to him. Because five, ten years from now, ten years from now, twenty years from now, when you have your family, I mean, you're gonna look, you're gonna go back and you're gonna say, you know what, that guy was right. And uh, again, I count it a privilege to be part of this group. And uh, Joe, I, you're putting together a, a great thing here in the President's Conference. Thank you.